Welcome to Electron Line. Many of us have struggled with finding the limit of certain functions, especially when we get zero divided by zero or infinity divided by infinity conditions. And that's where we need L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital figured out that there was a method to find the solution to finding the limits anyway in case we ended up with what we call a zero divided by zero or an infinity divided by infinity condition. In other words, it is a method to find the limit of a function when we have one of those conditions. And mathematically, the way we define that is, if, for example, we have two functions, f of x and g of x, and we're trying to find the limit of those two functions by plugging in a value for x, let's say the value is equal to a. So we evaluate the limit as x approaches a for the function of x, and let's say we get 0, and at the same time, when we plug in the same value for the other function, g of x, in the limit as x approaches a, and we get 0 again, or if the condition is such that if we take the limit when x approaches a of the function f of x, and we get either positive or negative infinity, and at the same time, we take the limit as x approaches a of the other function, g of x, when that becomes either plus or minus infinity, either if both functions become zero, or both, both functions become plus or minus infinity, when we let x approach a particular value, so then when we take the fraction of f of x divided by g of x, and we then let x approach that particular value of a, we'll either get 0 divided by 0, or infinity divided by infinity, but if we then take the derivative of f of x, and take the derivative of g of x, then we can find the limit of that function when we let x approach a. Of course, only under the condition that that limit actually exists for this particular fraction. So there's a lot of cases where you cannot find the limit because you end up with a zero divided by zero or an infinity divided by infinity condition. And if you then take the derivative, you can find the limit. So you start wondering, well, what is this all about? Take a simple example. Let's say we have a function, f of x, which is equal to the sine of x. Let's say we have g of x, which is equal to x. Now let's divide one by the other. So in this case, we have f of x divided by g of x, and let's say we want to find the limit as x approaches zero. And so in this case, that is the limit as x approaches zero of the sine of x divided by x. Now most of us have seen this before, and we already know the answer. But if you were to plug in the values for x, for example, if you evaluate it, the sine of 0 divided by 0, well, the sine of 0 is 0, we get 0 divided by 0. And that's, of course, undefined. Now, we know that the answer to that is 1. If we saw that before, we would know that. But let's use L'Hopital's rule and see that it is indeed 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative. So the derivative, uh, so the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of x divided by x should equal the limit as x approaches 0 of the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. So the derivative of the numerator is the cosine of x and the derivative of the denominator is simply equal to 1. Now let's go ahead and plug the limit and see what we get. So this is equal to the cosine of 0 divided by 1 which is equal to, of course, the cosine of 0 is 1. So it's equal to 1 divided by 1 which is equal to 1. So it turns out that at first, when we plug in the limit, we get 0 divided by 0. But using the Hopital's rule, by taking the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator, we get a different function in the numerator and a different function in the denominator. We now let x approach 0, and now we get an actual very different value. So it turns out that the limit of this is indeed 1, but we wouldn't know it unless we use the Hopital's rule. There's, of course, a different proof to show you that that is indeed the case, and I will make a video later on to show you that proof. It's kind of complicated, but it's a neat proof, so it's neat to see that. But look how much simpler it is to find the limit of a function when we use L'Hopital's rule. So we'll show you some more examples of that in the videos to come. You'll see L'Hopital was very smart to come up with this and probably saved a lot of frustration with a lot of people who otherwise could not find the limit without using this particular rule.